There was a time when I, a lover of fine dining adventures, imposed a self-imposed ban on eating out. A period when I thought my days of restaurant revelry were forever behind me. It took months before I dared to venture back into a similar establishment, never again setting foot in the den of doom where my gastronomic nightmare began. The culprit? None other than a slice of pizza, forever haunting my dreams like a cheesy specter of regret. It all started when I was invited by an acquaintance for a casual bite out. All seemed well at first. I indulged, even daring to dip that treacherous, cheesy triangle into what I foolishly assumed was a harmless garlic sauce. If I had known that horror would follow, I would have never stepped foot in that restaurant. Moments after my ill-fated feast, I felt my stomach turning, agonizing pain, rapid releases. I will spare you the details. But suffice it to say, it wasn't pretty. Thankfully, a friend rushed me to the hospital, where I underwent a barrage of tests including a particularly embarrassing episode involving mistaken instructions. As I stood in front of the nurse for the next test, I did my best to follow her commands, even using the last bit of strength within my arms to raise them to my chest and hold them tightly. I stood there, almost at the point of fainting, as the nurse continued to hurl the same instructions relating to holding my chest. Picture me, knees quaking, desperately clinging to what little rang clearly through the third time, when I somehow heard the sound more clearly. Your breath! Not your breast! The nurse exclaimed. This elicited uproarious laughter from my companion. As my arms dropped to my side, partly relieved, I could use the energy for something else. I deflated like a sad balloon, realizing the mistake, then sucked in whatever air I could trap. In the end, it was a lesson learned the hard way. Beware of the seductive allure of a seemingly innocent slice of pizza and garlic sauce, or it may just lead you down a path of digestive distress and linguistic confusion. Vocabulary Lover of Fine Dining Adventures Someone who enjoys exploring high-quality culinary experiences and trying new dishes or restaurants. Imposed a self-imposed ban. Enforcing a restriction or prohibition upon oneself without external pressure or influence. Revelry. Lively and noisy festivities or celebrations often involving drinking, dancing, and merrymaking. Forever behind me, indicating that something is permanently in the past or has been left behind with no intention of returning to it. Dared to venture back, summoning the courage or audacity to return to a place or situation that was previously avoided or feared. A similar establishment, referring to a place with comparable characteristics or offerings to another mentioned establishment. The Den of Doom, 
a metaphorical description of a place or situation perceived as highly unpleasant, dangerous, or foreboding. Gastronomic nightmare, an experience involving food that is so unpleasant or distressing that it becomes a source of fear or trauma. The culprit, a person or thing responsible for a particular problem or negative outcome. Cheesy specter of regret, a metaphorical representation of remorse or guilt associated with indulging in something perceived as low quality or undesirable, particularly in the context of cheesy food. I indulged, engaged in a pleasurable activity, or consumed something enjoyable, often in excess. Treacherous, cheesy triangle, referring to a type of food, a dish involving cheese, described as deceitful or hazardous, in this case, the pizza. Garlic sauce, a condiment or accompaniment made primarily from garlic, often used to flavor various dishes. Horror would follow, suggesting that something terrifying or dreadful would occur as a consequence of a preceding action or decision. Ill-fated feast, a meal or gathering that ends disastrously or unfavorably due to unforeseen circumstances or poor choices. Agonizing pain, intense and prolonged suffering or discomfort that causes distress or anguish. Rapid releases, referring to symptoms or bodily reactions that occur quickly and possibly forcefully, such as vomiting or diarrhea. Spare you the details, opting not to provide specific or graphic information about a particular event or experience. Suffice it to say, expressing that the preceding information is adequate to convey the intended meaning or conclusion, rushed me to the hospital, taken quickly to a medical facility for urgent treatment or care. Barrage of tests, subjected to a series of examinations or analyses in a short period, often to diagnose a medical condition. Almost at the point of fainting, close to losing consciousness due to extreme physical or emotional distress to hurl the same instructions, repeating the same directives or commands with force or intensity. Picture me, knees quaking, imagining oneself in a state of fear or nervousness as indicated by trembling knees. Desperately clinging to what little rang clearly through the third time struggling to maintain comprehension or focus despite difficulty understanding. I deflated like a sad balloon, experienced a sudden loss of enthusiasm or confidence akin to a balloon losing air and shrinking. Sucked in whatever air I could trap, attempted to breathe deeply or quickly, taking in as much air as possible. A lesson learned the hard way. Gained knowledge or insight through personal experience or adversity, often involving difficulty or suffering. Analyze. There was a time when I, a lover of fine dining adventures 
imposed a self-imposed ban on eating out, meaning at one point, I, someone who enjoys exploring high quality culinary experiences, decided to stop dining out voluntarily. A period when I thought my days of restaurant revelry were forever behind me, meaning during that time, I believed that I would never again experience the joy of dining out. It took months before I dared to venture back into a similar establishment never again setting foot in the den of doom where my gastronomic nightmare began. Meaning, after some time, I finally gathered the courage to return to a restaurant similar to the one where I had a terrible dining experience, vowing never to return to the original place. The Culprit? None other than a slice of pizza, forever haunting my dreams like a cheesy specter of regret. Meaning, the cause of my troubles was a slice of pizza, which continues to remind me of my regrettable experience. It all started when I was invited by an acquaintance for a casual bite out. All seemed well at first, meaning the sequence of events began when I accepted an invitation from someone I knew casually to go out for a meal. Initially, everything seemed fine. I indulged, even daring to dip that treacherous, cheesy triangle into what I foolishly assumed was a harmless garlic sauce, meaning I treated myself to the food, even risking trying the problematic slice of pizza dipped in what I mistakenly believed was a harmless sauce made of garlic. If I had known that horror would follow, I would have never stepped foot in that restaurant, meaning had I been aware of the terrible outcome awaiting me, I would have avoided going to that restaurant altogether. Moments after my ill-fated feast, I felt my stomach turning, meaning shortly after eating the unfortunate meal, I began to feel nauseous. Agonizing pain, rapid releases, I will spare you the details. But suffice it to say, it wasn't pretty. Meaning, I experienced intense pain and rapid bodily reactions, details of which I will not provide, but it was an unpleasant experience. Thankfully, a friend rushed me to the hospital, where I underwent a barrage of tests, including a particularly embarrassing episode involving mistaken instructions. Meaning, fortunately, a friend quickly took me to the hospital, where I underwent various tests, one of which involved an embarrassing misunderstanding. As I stood in front of the nurse for the next test, I did my best to follow her commands, even using the last bit of strength within my arms to raise them to my chest and hold them tightly. Meaning, during the subsequent test, I made an effort to follow the nurse's instructions, even though I was physically exhausted. I stood there almost at the point of fainting 
As the nurse continued to hurl the same instructions relating to holding my chest, meaning I was on the verge of passing out as the nurse repeatedly gave instructions about holding my chest. Picture me, knees quaking, desperately clinging to what little rang clearly through the third time when I somehow heard the sound more clearly. Your breath, not your breast, the nurse exclaimed. This elicited uproarious laughter from my companion. As my arms dropped to my side, partly relieved, I could use the energy for something else. Meaning, imagine me, trembling with fear, struggling to understand the instructions until the nurse clarified, leading to laughter from my companion. My arms fell to my side, and I felt partly comforted knowing that I could now use the energy I had been using to hold my chest for something else. I deflated like a sad balloon, realizing the mistake then sucked in whatever air I could trap. Meaning, I felt deflated and disappointed upon realizing my error. Then I took in as much air as possible. In the end, it was a lesson learned the hard way. Meaning, ultimately, I gained insight through a challenging experience. Beware of the seductive allure of a seemingly innocent slice of pizza and garlic sauce, for it may just lead you down a path of digestive distress and linguistic confusion. Meaning, be cautious of the tempting appeal of pizza and garlic sauce as they could result in both stomach discomfort and contribute to linguistic misunderstandings. Test What caused the narrator's gastronomic nightmare? Why did the narrator impose a self-imposed ban on eating out? What led to the narrator feeling nauseous after the meal? Who accompanied the narrator to the hospital? What embarrassing episode occurred during the barrage of tests at the hospital? What did the narrator mistakenly believe they were asked to do during the test? What did the narrator experience upon realizing their mistake during the test?
What were the actual instructions that the nurse had given to the narrator? What analogy does the narrator use to describe their emotional state after the misunderstanding? What warning does the narrator give at the end of the passage? Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.